Hey friends, I'm going to do another video here on my 2017 Nissan Frontier that I'm using for pest and wildlife control work. And uh, today's video is going to be about installing some LED lighting. Um, I bought some lights on eBay. They were trash. The seller was fraudulent. Um, they were dim as heck. So then I turned to Amazon, paid more. A couple dollars more but these are really bright they're reverse lights so they have a low a high and if you connect to both wires you get a really bright so these are perfect and I'm gonna install one out here on each side two in the back and then they have this bump right here so that kind of makes them a problem but the solution to it is to just mount them at an angle up here. So that's what we're going to do. And uh, my cat's going to help by rubbing on my ankles um, while I'm doing this. Because he suddenly decided he needs attention. So whatever. Anyway, uh, let me reposition the camera and we'll get started. I'm going to mount the interior lights first because I think those are easier. And uh, in the video... Um, description they're going to be links to the lights that I'm using um, I've already installed a switch I replaced the fuse that came with the switch with a self-resetting circuit breaker I have another 30 amp self-resetting circuit breaker here uh, just to protect anything downstream in case this wire shorts out and then I have a number eight cable that runs to the battery where there's another one of these that protects this line in case it should get shorted for some reason um, it's always important with mobile applications to install plenty of um, anti-short protection. Sorry, my, my cat's now doing weird things to my feet, and I just need to look and see what is he doing. Anyway, and it's one of three cats, but it's the weirder of the three, and they're all kind of weird. Uh, this is a four gang switch. Uh, it's rated for 40 amps. I'm only feeding at 30 because, you know, it was made in China and those 40 amps were probably counted going downstream with the tailwind. Um, but anyway, uh, originally I was going to run one, one switch for the back, one switch for each side, and one switch for inside, but I'm going to divide it into inside and outside and um, low and high, and if both are on, really bright. So, I think it's going to be awesome. Um, today's project is to get the switches physically installed, and we'll see how far I get on wiring them. Um, let's get going. Alright, so I'm also using um, self-tapping screws. These are from Bolt Depot. Um, they're a reputable uh, company. You know, Home Depot Lowe's, you can probably get self-tapping screws, but, you know, the problem I have with those places is... It's just really hard to find anything twice. And uh, I wanted a variety of sizes so that I would have what I needed when I needed it. And again, I'm mounting these at an angle because that solves the issue with the little bump on the back of them. These are bright enough that it isn't particularly important if they're 100% aligned or not.
There are a couple advantages to LED, um, the most significant of which is they just don't use that much power. No idea what the lumen rating on them is. Again, they're rated as backup lights. All right. So they're installed, and I think I'm going to go ahead and start wiring them. Let me uh, go get the wire and kind of think through this. All right, so first things first, I'm going to take care of grounding uh, each light before I go too far. Um, they've provided really long leads, and unfortunately, these leads are just way too long for what I'm doing. So rather than re-terminate them i'm just going to zip tie them into a little loop which is not usually the best thing to do but it'll work somewhere down there.
All right, those are done. So I'm going to work backwards and I'm going to use uh, adhesive clips um, because I have them and I think they'll work fine to hold this up here. I have a bunch of these, so I'm going to use them as I see fit, which is pretty liberally. later regret not using um, screws but I can always change later So I was going to use uh, little adhesive uh, clips, but they don't play nice with the thickness of this wire. zip ties that can be screwed down and then I don't like the uh, I don't have any real good ways to join this so it's gonna get joined with uh, solder and electrical tape all right so that's good Now I've got a bench soldering iron out here and the advantage to a bench soldering iron is it's fast. At least I think it is, it's turned on. Yeah. So just got to give it a couple minutes to warm up. And 
then I'll have an ample opportunity to burn myself. doesn't take a whole lot And then for safety reason, I'm going to turn the solder iron back off. And let me get some electrical tape and put this together. Actually, I think shrink wrap. Yeah, I'm going to use shrink wrap instead. I've got a lot of it, and it actually is better. This is a marine shrink wrap, and marine shrink wrap has um, adhesive in it. Alright, let me get my uh, heat gun. takes a second for it to warm up and then you need to get all the sides of it. just be sloppy and set that there and set this here. And I'm still going to come back with a regular zip tie. This is a strain relief, so it's there to keep 
pressure from being put on the joint. So I've got some more screwing around to do here. I'm going to put one there, one there, and that'll get me over into this corner here. So I'm going to stop the video while I work on that. You guys don't need to see me screw zip ties in. So we're going to go ahead and put some ties up that will make my life easier in a little bit, even if it's hell to put them in right now. start over on this. Oh, nice long leads.
turn that on and it does not take very long to warm up. All right, I think we're ready to solder, so we'll find the loose end. And basically, you just hold this against the wire, which heats it up, and then it will wick the solder into the joint, making a good sound joint. difficult for me to do this upside down I don't have very good, I don't have any depth perception you know what I'm gonna get a light I'll be right back All right, this will make this easier for me. Uh, as you get older, your eyes don't work as well, so I don't care how many carrots you eat. There we go. That's good enough. Now I think a little bit bigger piece of tubing. The uh, I was using quarter and this is 3 16 So I think this is going to be right for this. Yep, that looks good there. So let's fire this up.
hell did that get out of there? That's irritating. So that's that one, let's work on the other side. All right, we're going to solder the last of the lights that are on the roof. Here we go. And I want a little better melt out on this one. There we go. And we're all done with soldering those. Thank you. 
next we're going to take some uh, 3 16 marine shrink tubing and we're going to use it to reinforce and protect these joints. So this serves as an insulator and it serves as a reinforcement. zip ties. So that tucks that out of the way. Now we're going to turn our attention to the back. So I'll be right back. All right, so we're going to secure some of this to the existing wire loom. Install some anchors at ties. weather moving in I'm hoping not to get caught by it again but it's probably going to start raining on me
think about here is a good spot for this to be cut. see which ones do what. So A and B. what my tester. And we're grounded to the frame, so I'm just going to touch that. And So I'm going to temporarily hook these up while I work on troubleshooting the ground issue. I'm going to go get a jumper.
let's see. All right, so we got these wires hooked up and now we just got to solder this. Big pieces of wire are increasingly difficult to heat. There we go. That's what it should look like. It should just heat up and it should just suck the solder into the joint.
All right, there we go. So, let's see what size this is. Oh, well, we can get it into the smaller one, so we will. Heat up real quick. Good. So, let me show you what it does. Boom. Boom. Low. High. So, the interior lights are done. Uh, I don't know if it's worth having a separate switch or not, but they're done. Um, there may be times when I want the low on versus the high, but uh, it looks good and it puts plenty of light in here. I'm going to put some lights on the outside, but that is not today's project because this took uh, most of the afternoon. Uh, and I'm going to trim these up and then I'm going to call it a night because it's fixing to rain again. <laughs> 